So Steve Scalise, um, who uh, I, I, I don't understand why they're running with this because it's so easy to poke holes in. But Steve Scalise was speaking about gun control and how you just can't do anything, right? This is just mass shootings. They're natural. They're natural. We just have to learn to live with them. And maybe we can make some tweaks to school architecture. But other than that, we're not going to do anything. And they keep using what should be patented now as the Bobert argument about comparing guns to planes. Problems ...that were creating those attacks. And airplanes were used that day as the weapon to kill thousands of people and to inflict terror on our country. There wasn't a conversation about banning airplanes. There was a conversation about connecting the dots. How can we try to figure out if there are signs we can see to stop the next attack from happening. And some people might have thought that wasn't possible. And yet, because Congress came together and focused on the root cause of the problem, thank God we have been able to stop other attacks on our homeland. And there have been many. <laughs> All right, so let's just break this down piece by piece. Can every American own a commercial airplane? I mean, I guess... You yeah, can. actually, right after work, I'm going down to the airplane store and I'm going to fly directly into Steve Scalise's house. <laughs> <laughs> That's the American way. Um, if you do... you have, There are airplanes that can shoot, gun, that can shoot you know, weaponry. They're used in war. Do civilians have those? I just wanted to, to check. This is an actual question. We... Wait. What, oh what's... well, I mean, I don't know. I, I imagine the FAA will probably uh, look at your license if you yes. uh, fly your uh, buy uh, your propeller. Yeah, plane. I don't think you can just shoot just, yeah, a I machine don't... gun out of it. Yeah, right. I also just don't think you can buy like an F thirty five. Right. That's my point. Yeah, you, right? can't, you like, can't just like go out and be like, yeah, I'm you can't get an F thirty five. Like, I'm I'm almost positive you can't buy an F thirty five that is able to actually you know shoot uh, rockets or sh shoot. Uh, I don't know enough about uh, planes, so I'm going to move on. But I do know that after 9-11, guys, Scalise and Boebert, this is a terrible example, so please keep making it. We regulated air travel to like an in insane degree. People had to take their shoes off to go on planes. You have to go through a metal detector. Now you have to go to through that thing that scans through your whole body. Um, we, uh, you have identification that you um, uh, need to provide when you're going onto an airplane. There are no fly lists. There are people that literally are not allowed to fly because they are deemed as a threat. That is a ver there are a Actually, variety of examples that you can use and just directly copy and paste that and say, okay, this is how we're going to regulate guns. It's well, actually a perfect example. The, Keep like, making it. The only thing you'd br like, uh, that's a point. Like the only reason I would invoke 9-11 would be like, hey, let's not like over surveil Muslims in response to this or like do all these sort of civil liberties uh, uh, things that are actually problematic but he can't actually say that because the, the what's on the table isn't uh, like massively surveil Muslims it's uh, don't let people have guns that can shoot that tremendous amount of ballistics <laughs> uh, per second like you know people people uh, are okay with that yeah, and if you're Muslim or if you uh, are subjectively deemed suspicious to law enforcement, the TSA, they can literally search every inch of your body. It's a massive violation, frankly, but that's the lengths that we went to to ensure that plane travel, which it's not even a good analogy from this in the sense that licensed pilots are flying commercial planes, not the individual passengers on the plane slash gun i mean like that part doesn't even make sense we, we made we made uh, the cockpits a lot less accessible yes make guns a lot less accessible yes there you go <laughs> i mean it is just like so there are so many different ways in which this doesn't work for republicans let alone the fact that a commercial airplane is not a weapon that can kill that can be easily carried by an individual into a school, into a mall, into a public place that can mow down kids, adults, what have you, with ease. The, the reason it was anomalous that that happened was because it was already a difficult feat. There was a coordinated terrorist attack where they planned for months to do this, as opposed to, I'm 18 and I'm gonna run down to the gun store 
and I'm going to get this and then I'm going to shoot up a school or, you know, the shooting that just happened um, where the gun was purchased on the day of. Was that the Evalde one? I can't even keep track. Um, regardless, you can do it on a whim. <laughs> um, and and there, if 9-11 was happening every day, multiple times a day in the United States, if hi plane hijackings were happening, that would be analogous. Yeah. But that's not the case. Yeah, and I mean, really, you in order to have a gun in this country, you should have to have a, frankly, a strained relationship with the state, meaning... It, you shouldn't just be able to go to a local <laughs> capitalist and say, hey, uh, here, I have some cash. You have this implement of war. Uh, I want that. You should have to go to a state department. Like the, You could re very easily do this with the game and fish departments. Uh, and you should have a long, long, long process for... for I mean, if, if we're going to allow things like this to be um, obtainable, it should be like um, you're basically a state employee by that time. Yeah. I mean, it's it. I really hope they they keep using this as an excuse. But frankly, in terms of the substance, it's almost just like I'm I'm banging my head against the wall because it doesn't really matter what they say. It doesn't matter if Steve Scalise goes up there and goes like they are just they're they're playing you know prevent defense. They are running out the clock until the public has moved on. And like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. And it's incumbent upon us to make sure that the public doesn't move on until, you know, Republicans pay a price because they're not going to do anything, frankly, legislatively, I don't think. Also, it's interesting. I mean, I totally agree with you in the sense that it, it essentially it effectively doesn't matter what they say because yeah. it's the same outcome. But I do find it interesting that that went from Lauren Boebert's mouth into Scalise's. I do, because it's so bad. Yeah, too. yeah. In the sense of like that rose up the rungs from like her on a podcast or whatever into the House Minority Whip's mouth at a at a press conference. And no, but she's she's not. She's, she's fringe. She's, she's, so, she's fringe. She's fringe, bro. <laughs> yeah, she's not the same as the respectable Republicans like Scalise, who also fundamentally has no different position from her on this ex incredible issue of massacring of Americans writ large. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is always, it's just more clear now because media moves faster that, like, the uh, smart Republican, the William F. Buckley types aren't that much different than just sort of the base um, clan types. <laughs> Speaking of clan, which is Steve Scalise, uh, who said he is David Duke without the baggage. Yeah. So. That's always good to remember. John Cock Toastin. I really hope that wasn't something. Um, all commercial flights were immediately grounded for weeks following 9-11. Yes.